This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to this week's podcast for your author's success with the Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing podcast. And as you listen, you will get a variety of ahas, insights, tips, and how-tos for you as an author, for your book publishing business, for book marketing ideas, and so much more. Today, we have a return guest. I don't know if this is the second or third time Jeanette has been with us, but Jeanette Seibley is an award-winning author, international executive coach, and she's a keynote speaker. For more than 27 years, her focus has been on guiding leaders to excel, whether or not they have the title. As Jeanette would say, it's all about the brag in you. She's got several (laughs) books under her umbrella. One's called It's Time to Brag, the Business Edition. Um, One that I like particularly well is called The Secret to Selling Yourself Anytime, Anywhere. Start bragging. And then she is going to transfer over into being a fiction author as well, as in that uh, she has a her first her debut uh, book coming out called The Old Wooden Rocker. So that's a lot's going on. It's very exciting. Welcome back to the show, Jeanette. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, this is, of course, um, I, you know, it always amazes me how authors don't think of authoring and publishing as a business. So bragging is so essential, is it not? It really is, because as you've said many, many times, uh, an author's job is 10% writing and 90% marketing. And the problem a lot of authors run into is they don't know how to brag. They know how to talk about their book, but unfortunately, it really falls flat when people are listening to them they're not enticed to then go out and buy the book. Uh, and and that's and it's it's to, to call the call to action we always talk about. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> in, in that process. All right. So what are um, I always think it's important to get into the element and I guess the uh, you know there's the imp- the imposter factor that comes into place. I think a lot of authors think of themselves as imposters, that who are they to really be claiming their expertise in whatever it is they are? Who are they to be the go-to person? Can you kiss on that a little bit? You know, that's an excellent point because sadly you are so, so right. I think a lot of it is we have forgotten how to share ourselves in such a way that people are actually in inspired by who we are. And Mm -hmm. again, we get a little concerned and fearful of that, you know, because we were taught when we were kids that it's egotistical and wrong to brag, to talk about ourselves, to say, hey, I won this award, yay. And unfortunately, a lot of people, even though they're adults, they might be 45 or 65, it doesn't matter uh, what happened when they were five, it's still deeply ingrained in them. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I wonder, and then I I see sometimes the over brag, and I don't know if it's really a brag's the right word, where every kid gets an award for something, um, and I, you know I think sometimes that that it actually dilutes the power of a real accomplishment that you can brag about. Do you have any thoughts on that? Oh, I that is so true. 
it's like I don't have to really do anything other than show up. And I think that's really, really sad today because everybody in my, in my belief, I believe everybody in this life has a gift. And that gift may be writing, it may be selling, it may be being an engineer or a, a IT designer. It doesn't matter. We all have those gifts. And unfortunately, they've been diluted by, I, I haven't really done anything. I, I'm just one of many. And they forget that each and every person has an impact on, on themselves, their family, their friends, and their, you know, where they work. They, they actually impact people. There's an old mm-hmm. saying is that what you do today, you have absolutely no idea how that will play itself out in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that dominoing factor. And it comes absolutely. back, you know, I was talking with a, an, another one of my author experts and, and we were talking about the impacts, those things going up. And I, and I revealed that I still quote my fourth grade teacher. When I was, you know, nine years old, embedded in my head, I still quote that. Mrs. Russell, Mrs. Russell. (laughs) Well, I remember my mom had a similar experience. I think, I don't know what grade she was actually in, maybe fourth grade or second, somewhere. And she had drawn this Robin. And it was actually, if you, she kept it. Um, But the teacher laughed at her and said that was really it said it was really, really horrible. And so my mom carried that around with her until she was oh. 70 years old. And I, and I encouraged her. She goes, I'm thinking about taking drawing classes. I said, go for it. Right. I still have her pictures. She's been gone now for over 13 years and I still have her pictures, her oil paintings on my wall. So my point is, is that it's never too late to learn how to, Honor your gifts and then learn how to share them. Get out there and talk about them, but talk about them in such a way that it inspires others to then go out and do what they do best too. Well, I I can, you know, tagging on that, I remember this was like in um, high school, a, a music teacher really dinging a person in her voice. She became a very successful professional singer. And yep. <laughs> so I, I think we also need to turn off some of the noise, some of the noise that comes to get directed us. But we I digress. All right. So let's talk about some <laughs> of the things that successful authors can do to get their brag on. And and I know that that you've got um, in your book some steps that we can kiss on a little bit. But let's go through yep. some of these things they need to start doing starting today, today. Well, starting today, and here's the thing, because some of you will think, oh, it's just going to be too hard, too difficult. It really is not. It's really quite simple. What it will take is that you sit down, take out paper, and and Judith and I will talk you through it right now, because Judith and I have been through this for Mm. off and on for over the years and working with other authors. So take out paper and pencil. Do Do not set up your your laptop for this. Uh, A University of Michigan study has found that your brain is more actively engaged when you write than when you're typing. And so what happens is all that stuff that you've been denying or you haven't been present to or you're just not aware of, uh, all of a sudden comes out when you're writing because it's like, oh, oh, I did that. Oh, how cool. Wow, that's wonderful. So first thing is take out the pen or pencil. And paper. And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw two lines down the length of it so that you have three columns. Okay. The next, three, right, three magic then, columns, everybody. All right. So <laughs> this is, I know some of you are walking, so you're going to have to mentally do this and probably come back and re-listen to this um, again exactly. to, to, to go through it, which is fine because what it does is what Jeanette's doing is setting up and starting the juice meter that I like to call it and, <laughs> and just get you start chewing on, okay, three columns. I can visualize this. All right, we're ready. Right. And don't shortchange yourself. It is something where you really do need to sit down and write. So 
please, when you get done walking or exercising or whatever you do, just get your paper out and start writing. So over the top of the first column on the far left would be knowledge. And then over the second column, would you would write talent. And then over the third column, you would write achievement. Then let's start with knowledge. So what I'd like you to do in one or two words, write everything that you're knowledgeable about. And that could be uh, books. It could be reading. It could be publishing. Uh, Judith, jump in here. It could be writing, fiction, nonfiction. Okay, it could, could be, be re research. It could be, uh, yep. it could be descriptive characters. She said one or two words because sometimes you need a second yep. word. Uh, could exactly. be in your fiction writers. It it could be, uh, it it could be cooking. You know, it, it, it or could gardening. be gardening, it could be running. I, I think that what's really important here is where people get st stuck, Jeanette, is they, in, in, the, in their knowledge base, they think in the, the present um, venture f versus what, what did that fourth grade teacher say to you that so stuck and became the shaping of who you are? So, you know, some of those kind of things um, you, you want to pull into play. I, I just think that's so important. And, and don't be shy about this. This is this is exactly <laughs> this is and this is this is where so many people get really uh, Jeanette and I have worked with people over the years just in our open workshops, you know, and trying to and, and they forget they forget how good they are. It could be working with kids. You know, it, it could be acting, it could be dramatizing, it could be storytelling. All right, with that, we're going to take a quick break. With us is Jeanette Sibley, and we're going to get you bragging. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author U extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, Members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author U today at authoru.org. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Jeanette Sibley, and we are talking about getting your brag on as an author and and why is this essential because you have to learn how to pitch yourself and this is what we're this is where we're going with this you have to learn how to pitch yourself in my opinion in 10 words or less 
what we're going through right now is going to make that happen. All right, Jeanette. So we've got these columns going. Knowledge was the first. Right. And we covered that. And so now we're going to cover talent. And what you're going to do is you're going to take each knowledge, each area of knowledge, and you're going to follow it across and write talents. Now, the talents will be one or two words. Mm -hmm. They will be verbs. So, for example, uh, books might be in your knowledge column. So, under talent, you might be write, uh, write writing, uh, editing, proofing, creating. Again, if the sky's the limit. You can have more than one. Write down everything. Do not censor yourself on these. Mm -hmm. and, and I would add on, again, do not limit yourself to just being an author. Think about exactly. broadening it up. You, you may have an amazing talent at three years old. They, and you have very, <laughs> let's pull it out <laughs> and see it, uh, what it is. I mean, I, um, I'm a fan of the television show, The Voice. And when they do some of the recaps, um, of with some of the people who who make it um, uh, to the live show, they actually recapture. Uh, you know, I started singing when I was three. All right, I I I I could. So that tells me in in front of the church. Okay, so here's what that tells me: you can command an audience. You have presentation yeah. skills. All right. So that's you want to start really go back to when you're a kiddo. You maybe have done stuff when you were a kiddo that had talent, but someone came along and said, oh, you shouldn't do that when you grow up. And maybe right. you should be doing that as a grown up. Just saying, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's very, very true. Uh, write down everything. I mean, you might have under knowledge, you might have cats, you might have dogs, I mean, grandkids children, write down everything. Do not, like Judith and I are saying, do not censor yourself. Do not limit yourself. Right. It's going to be amazing what's going to pop out that you go, oh, wow, where did that come from? Haven't thought about that in years, if ever. Yeah. Yeah. So this you is know, that great opportunity to do that. Jeanette, I loved when you use the word censoring. Don't self-censor. Don't self-censor. And if you're stuck a little bit, if you've got some, you know, some friends to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm calling. I have an off the wall question. No holds barred. What do you think I'm good at? And just listen and write down what they say. And don't defend. <laughs> and, yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, this don't, is deny. No time. <laughs> don't deny. Don't deny. D don't don't divert those D's in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Because and this is what we often do when people acknowledge what you're good. Oh, you poo poo it. No poo pooing allowed. All right. Here we go. All right. So <laughs> talent. <laughs> All right. So talent. All right. What's next? Jeanette? So we've got those written down. Keep writing. You should have at least one. I would keep writing for each area of knowledge what your talents are. Now, they may be the same. So, for example, we just covered books, but we could say get more specific and say fiction. And I would say, and you might write down create, write, read, prove, like that. So don't sense yourself. Uh, we keep using that word. Just write. And don't worry about how you're spelling things or if it's a lot of duplication, because guess what? No one else is going to see this except you. Okay. All right, column number three. All right, achievement. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is the secret sauce, as Judith would like to call it. That's it's what I called say. achievement. Yes. Pardon? I do say that. It is a secret sauce um, on doing that. And, and again, I'm just going to add in, let's start, you know, when did you get that first really acknowledgement? that first Bravo, how old were you? How old were you? Yeah. Okay. And what did you have last year or 10 years ago or 20 years ago? Like, again, no holds barred here. No censorship, just right. But here's the key. This is the secret, secret sauce that most people overlook. You want to use two numbers. So you want to focus on the results. 
because that's what sells. Mm -hmm. So, so for example, now we're going to follow this across like what we have been doing. I'll use the same example as I did earlier. Uh, it could be under knowledge might be books. Under talent might be write, like you're writing. Under achievements, I'm just going to give you one of mine. Uh, published eight books uh, since 2009. See how simple that was? It was two numbers, very simple. Don't make it more complicated. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to add another one to the books because uh, this is kind of a fun thing to do that when I teach my um, how to create an Amazon bestseller class, it's very common for our authors to, you know, be on five, even 10 Amazon bestseller lists. You could take that with your book, right? Your, your, yeah. your, your book. Um, and that you could, that's, so that's your, your writing, your publishing, you published your talent was you did a, your, uh, you wrote a book uh, and you published it and your achievement is it, your book was on 10, 10, 10 Amazon bestseller lists. Absolutely. So, and again, go through every area of talent. And do this. Come up with your numbers. Now, you you might say, well, what are numbers? Numbers could be whole numbers, like what Judith and I have been sharing, like 10, 9, 100, 1,000, like that. Or you can say uh, almost or more than or about approximately. You can use percentage increases. I know when I've done this uh, for business groups and I talk about um, hiring is the talent and the achievement is in the last in in six months I had a client uh, go I had a client actually save a quarter of a million dollars in six months and again if you want to go through and keep it simple keep it simple that's the key sometimes we get too wordy we try to sound very sophisticated and use big words the other that's the key and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we go on to the next segment, but yeah, yeah. that well, is you very know, important. I, and I do want to kiss on that because your example of a quarter of a million dollars. All right. So that's, that's a quarter of a million dollars. All right. We, we got six words here and that I would rather say increased revenues uh, in uh, increased revenues by a quarter of a million dollars or versus increased revenues by more than 250,000 in a number. I will remember that number better than a quarter of a million dollars. I'm just saying that's me. Yes. And we're, we're, when we get to the next segment, I think what you're saying is important. Don't worry about how you're writing it. It's mm -hmm. going to come down to your audience. So an HR, human resource professional, would understand a decrease in turnover because it sells along with how much is the savings, where a business owner is going to be looking at the bottom line and how did that improve profitability. But we're getting mm -hmm. a little ahead of ourselves here. So mm -hmm. keep okay. writing. Just get your numbers in there. Okay. So with her three columns, knowledge, talent, achievements. So why is that important? Well... Do you want to sell more books and schedule more presentations? This is where it starts. Would that be correct, Jeanette? Oh, absolutely. And don't cheat yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Don't do one or two and say, I've got it handled. You're going to be really, really amazed by how much more confidence you have when you get done with the exercise. I worked with a, a group of, of professionals uh, last year. There was 83 of them. And they, uh, the feedback that went back to the event organizer was, wow, I feel so much more confident now when I present my ideas. Mm -hmm. So it does Thanks. work, but you've got to do the work. That's the key. Got it. Okay. What's next on our list? So the next part would be the I am statement. And this is where you can have a lot of fun, but a lot of people uh, like to fall back onto what they've been doing. Uh, where they like to talk about the book or they like to uh, 
um, get very esoterical or conceptual or use fancy words to describe their, the, their book. And it gets them in trouble because mm-hmm. most people listen like a 12 year old. And you only have about 15 seconds to grab their attention. And so it's really, really important in this next section, it's called the I am statement, that you look at, oh my goodness, how can I say this in such a way that will grab people's attention? Sometimes you will use the numbers, sometimes you won't. It really depends on how you're using your brag statements to showcase yourself. Mm -hmm. I love what you said, Jeanette, where you said most people think like a 12-year-old because we tell people when you're writing, you've got to keep it simple like in the fifth to sixth grade level, which is what she's saying, 12 years old. So in that range. Okay. And some people take that offensively or take it personally. It's like, no, it has nothing to do with you. You have to remember that what you're creating is it for you? It's for your audience. It's to engage them. It's to get them lit up. It's to inspire them. It's to want them to listen to you. I had a woman one time that I worked with who had called me out of the blue and was a really good keynote speaker. And she also was an author. And she was complaining because she would go to these presentations, do a great job, but no one would buy anything. So I took her through the examples that we're going through right now. And you know what she said when I was done? She goes, that's stupid. I said, whoa, okay. Well, you know, if you get hungry enough, you might want to try it. You can imagine my surprise when I went to a keynote that she was doing a month later. And the person who was introducing her, the event planner, was introducing her. And she was like oozing with credibility before she even took the mic. And then she did her great job of engaging the audience and everything. Afterwards, she had people surrounding her, two, three people deep. And she caught my eye and she mouthed the words, thank you. And what Uh she learned how to do was brag. And with that, we're going to take our next break. Thank you, Jeanette. (laughs) Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, with me is Jeanette Sibley, and Jeanette is an eight-time author. She's ready to debut her first fiction book, The Old Wooden Rocker, but what we're talking about are her classics. It's Time to Brag, Business Edition, and The Secret to Selling Yourself, Anytime, Anywhere, Start Bragging. So hopefully, Jeanette, we've got past all the bombisms that, you know, you shouldn't brag. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we would hope so, but then people get stuck with the numbers, you know, when people are resistant to something like this, where they're actually looking at who they are and what they've done in life and they, 
and all the good things that they've done, it can be really hard for some people. Uh, they're, they're, we're so used to in this life of downplaying who we are and what we've achieved. So what or, Judith and I are doing today is giving them permission to cut it out. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I used to, uh, I, I often call that the school teacher mentality, that surely everyone will recognize what a great teacher I am. Not necessarily so. Um, so exactly. you, you have to let people know. <laughs> so we, we, when we went to the break, we were talking about the I am statement. Um, and there's a lot of stumbling going on because people are, it's that reluctance that, you know, old, old messages that you don't say boldly and bravely sometimes who you are. So what are some of the stumbles you've seen besides the example well, you just often, gave about the speaker? Yeah. Yeah, too often I've seen people come back from a conference and they uh, had a speaker who was a marketing expert. And so they give out the, the, the standard, you know, products, services, benefits, and that's how they start. And people just, mm -hmm. they turn off immediately. You know, I don't mm -hmm. care if you're from the multi-marketing uh, multi type of company or your own company. You know, if you go into the lingo without sharing who you are in the matter, like who are you? What have you achieved? Many people today will turn it off. They just stop listening to you. Mm -hmm. Again, you've got that 15 seconds. It's probably even less than that before you've lost them. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then when they're lost, they're lost. Yes, what you exactly. Need to get. You don't get them Somebody. back by talking over them or trying no. to. <laughs> Follow no. along, trying to, you know, still give your spiel. <laughs> when they're yeah. gone, they're gone. <laughs> so, you know, if I, if I walked into a group and someone asked me to introduce, and if you remember what I said, 10 seconds or 10 words, yeah. just try to do it. 10 seconds, 10 words, whichever is less is better, in my opinion. <laughs> well, I would agree. And I give people 20 words. And it's amazing how many people struggle with that. We yeah, are thanks. so into... Uh, describing ourselves as team players, professional, and with integrity. And those, I call them fluffy words. And the reason I call them fluffy is because they're meaningless. And, let, you know, a lot of people use those words, and it people don't get engaged with them. And if I say I'm an author, mm, I'm a speaker, eh, I'm a coach, like, oh, my goodness, I already know hundreds of you go away, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Don't call me. All right. Or, oh, okay. Exactly. Comes, Leave me alone. Okay, here, here comes the business card. So if if I was into a group <laughs> I didn't know and they asked me to introduce my, myself, I would say I'm Dr. Judith Bryles. I'm a book publishing and book marketing expert, period. That's it. Right. And with you, I would add on and I've generated over five million dollars in my 40 year career. Again, it, 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 what it that also, does is it sets you apart from everybody else trying to be like you. Here's, but here's a variation because throwing out a five million dollar tag might scare, scare, or be irrelevant to the group. To a speaker's group, that would be totally relevant. So you have yeah. to know who you know have a, a a thing of the landscape. What you could say. I'm Doc. Well, I would say I'm Dr. Judith Bryles. I'm a book marketing and book uh, a book marketing and book publishing expert, and my words have created over one million book sales, um, or or something like that. You could bring get exactly. in a number. You bring in the number to establish your expertise on that. Exactly. All right. So. That, it differentiates you from everybody else out there saying that they're doing something the same or similar. And that's right. key. Okay. And so the message that goes through your listener's head is, oh, she does know what she's talking about. Oh, she exactly. does know how to sell books. Oh, she does know about book marketing. Oh, she must know about publishing if she sold a million copies. See, that's what's important. And and you want to get their little I would little minds, shame on me. You want to get their minds thinking <laughs> to start saying, tell me more. Some kind of a tell exactly. me more. And then you got them. 
Exactly. And then you would get into my background includes, which you better be using your numbers and keep, again, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So back to the I am statement. Mm -hmm. Again, you want to, you don't have to use the numbers. I have uh, heard people do a really good job with it. But normally when you use a number like what Judith just did, you can hear the zing when she added those numbers. You could hear, probably feel your attention perk up when she used those numbers. Like, oh, wow, I I didn't realize she had done all that. All she did in 20 words or less is say, you know, she's she's published a million books. But we, we infer so much from that. And usually what they will then say is, Tell me more. Now, if they don't get, don't get nervous. It just means they don't have an interest in writing a, in publishing a book. That's all. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. All right. Background. You teased us with background. What do we do there? Well, the background is basically when you put together an I am statement. People and they say, "Tell me more," and you want them to say, "Tell me more." You don't want to fill in before they've asked the question. And here's the reason why. If they aren't engaged, they won't ask you to tell tell me more about that. How did you do that? What's involved in doing something like that? Those are the types of questions that will come out. If they don't, they're not engaged. And you're talking to dead air. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to really honor yourself and value your words and not talk to dead air. So, for example, I might say I am a hiring expert with over 40 years of of helping companies save money in their hiring selection process. And then I've already given the one example. And somebody would say, well, tell me more. And they would say, well, with one company in six months, I saved them a quarter of a million dollars and reduced turnover from 42% down to 26%. And again, if they're still engaged, you'll say, whoa, wow. And then you keep talking until they're ready to buy. But as Judith and I are going to touch on, is there is such a thing as talking too much. And that's where we get ourselves in trouble because we keep talking. It's like water of the mouth. Right, Judith? Oh, yes. Well, sometimes we say diarrhea, but we won't say that. people. All right. So, let you know, let's use an example. We had, um, I do uh, once a month on the second Saturday in my home, uh, we do what we call for the Author You community for the members. They're invited to come. And it's, a, I, it's it can be a free for all. We never know where it's going to go. We don't, we don't know. It, 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 it is a non-agenda meeting. The only thing is you have, you come with questions. So we were talking about pitching, which is what we're doing. This is a, this is pitching everybody. How do you pitch yourself? Your brag is a pitch. And we had one person that, that her words flowed like the, the, the dam had burst and, uh, and we stopped her. And it was just way too much information, TMI, way too much information <laughs> that was that was grossly irrelevant, that was grossly irrelevant. One of the things when we talk too much is we're nervous, Yeah, we're a little nervous, and we feel like we have to fill more because there's a little silence, when I think sometimes silence could be the golden egg because they're thinking what they just heard. And they're, in it, and they, yeah. yeah, and it could be. Silence is our friend. Silence is our friend. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes we bomb. We all, we've all had bombs, but that um, what you do want to do is that whole deal of get it very succinct, what it is and, and that line out there. Um, and then I know, I know what Jeanette's next step is going to be because it's so essential in this process, but too many words will kill your sale, kill your presentation, kill your credibility. You need to understand that. Well, and what I find, Judith, a lot of times is when people are going off on tangents like that, Mm -hmm. number one, they're not clear of their value. 
they're not clear mm. of the gifts that they're providing. And so instead of articulating it succinctly as a brag statement, they're talking around it, over it, to the left, to the right, underneath it. And people are lost and they're not going to give you the time to try to figure it out with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so you've lost that. You, you've you lost a sale. You've lost valuable time. Um, and then you feel crummy. And you do yeah. feel crummy when because you know you feel uh oh it didn't work. Yep, there must be something wrong with me, and you got to get. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you. You si- right. you simply it's- didn't brag. That's all that happened. And, uh, okay. Or you bragged, and then you kept talking. Oh, it's the old thing. Nobody likes me. Everyone hates me. I think I'll eat some worms. <laughs> all right, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we, we just want you to eat some of the worms back. So less is more. Less is more. Yeah. All right. So Jeanette, I know we're gonna we're we're coming up to our our final break here, which is kind of disgusting. Yes, <laughs> but it is. Um, it's like wow. Okay. Okay. So let's. We're in the I am statement. What's next after that? That getting that tightened down. Yeah, you got the I am statement, and then you add my background includes again only offer that I cannot. I cannot state this too frequently. Only offer it when somebody asks you a question. And make sure, make sure, make sure that you're putting brag statements. That's why you, when you're doing your KTAs, is what we just went through earlier, your knowledge, talent, and achievement. That's why we're doing so many of them. So that you can pick and choose some for whatever fits the conversation is you have to remember your audience. Always remember your audience. Always. And every audience shifts a little bit. All right. So we have about 40 seconds to our next break. Is there another little goodie we can get in here before we jump into that? <laughs> well, I, re- I just remember um, uh, several weeks ago, I was working with uh, a woman and she talked a lot like what you were talking about mm-hmm. just, you know, it, just a few minutes ago. And I coached her. I said, start with your brag statement. Be really clear what that is. Work with it. Get it succinct. But then, but then as you talk with them further, always start with the end in mind. Because right. a lot of times we like to Hold talk on. until we get to the end. All right. And we will come back with the end in mind. <laughs> This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy. Build your brand and platform and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, 
by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Jeanette Seibley, and we are really talking about one of the most essential things that you can get down for book marketing, book sales, your book success, whether you are speaking in front of a group, whether you are uh, just generally networking in in an environment that you're meeting new people, or you are at a book signing. A book signing. Jeanette's the author of The Secret to Selling Yourself Anytime, Anywhere, and It's Time to Brag. You can get, uh, she writes an excellent blog. You can find it at SEBCO, uh, at at, uh, SEBCO.com and go to S-E-B-C-O, S-E-I-B-C-O.com and sign up for it there. And Jeanette, I'd like to do a leap here into the art of book uh, book signings and bookstores. Oh, yeah. You want to go with me there? Oh, I'd love to because there's a quote that you and I generated last week. It was really cool. It's called Invisibility Leads to Stagnation. Embracing the Brag Keeps You Visible. And I just Ab- love that because we're authors. We need to be out there, be seen, but yet we like to be trying to hide out and hope that people come to us and beg us to buy our book. And, and actually, the, you're no, you don't have to really sell it. But just because of what you said does it. Now, we have, uh, uh, we have done several book fairs, um, and Jeanette has been one of the participants. And, and Jeanette and I are kind of the bookends um, uh, for <laughs> there's several authors. There's, there may be seven authors who are involved in it, and we can always tell who's going to sell books. Um, that if, if we weren't there, um, being visible and and being the barkers, actually, we were, we're barkers, um, <laughs> and that doesn't mean we're woofing, but we are snagging and luring people in. It's like fishing. If you've ever fished, you throw out your line and you gently start reeling it in until the snag happens, and that uh, depending upon you know exactly how we're positioned and where you are, but if we weren't there, I will tell you the book sales for those authors would be probably eighty percent less because they sit, they sit, they don't understand and get the art of pre-engagement from their for the way they look the way they dress, from the way they stand. You notice I said stand versus sitting. Okay. So, um, and it it depends upon what they are. I mean, if I, for example, there was, we had an author with a new book about a caterpillar. It was designed for children. If I saw any parent coming in, any parent coming in, I would have the book in front of me and held it to catch the kiddo's eye. And I would say, do you like caterpillars? Oh, and little, little heads nod. Oh, yeah, I love fuzzy caterpillars. <laughs> love fuzzy caterpillars. Mm-hmm. All right, so they are now in front of me, and we can start talking. Now, I know that the kid doesn't have their credit card. The four-year-old doesn't have a credit card. and <laughs> could grab that. But I know that a four-year-old is a master at sales, too. And, yeah. and getting mom to buy the book. All right. So we, we, but we start that way. Just do you like caterpillars or, or something like that? That's for a child. But it, 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 there's variables 
on this. And Jeanette and I would be on the lookout for that kind of thing. And sometimes we're so busy helping other authors, we forget about our own books. But with that... Yeah, with that said, and it could be, then I would say, hey, mom, what kind of books do you like? And she says, oh, well, I like romance. I said, we have a fabulous author here who writes women's literature woven with romance. Can I introduce her to you? Sales done. Let me tell you, the sale will be done. (laughs) So um, that's what we do. Um, and that kind of thing you need to, but let's say you're on a solo event. You don't have something like a Jeanette or me there hooking for you. <laughs> and, 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 and so that's a good word you, for it, Judith. Uh, well, it is. A, a better but word we're, we're, might be bra- bragging for you, bragging for you instead of hooking for you. Yeah. Yes. But bragging <laughs> for you. But, but, you know, you've got to have that hook. The brag is your hook and bringing it in. So what do you do? from the display of your book to the first words that come out of your mouth to start the engagement process. All right, Jeanette, jump in. Well, here's a quote. If you can't sell yourself, you can't sell your book and receive well-deserved notoriety. Again, you got to talk about you, your book first. Don't try to sell. Uh, there's a, a woman who's done an amazing, amazing job with young teens. Uh, Mm -hmm. And she sells books about dragons. Mm -hmm. And she'll say, do you like dragons? And they'll go, oh, yeah. And then she talks about the 30 dragons that she's collected when she was uh, in in service on the Navy. And she bought them from throughout the world. Let me tell you, that's a really powerful brag. And and if the kids there by themselves, they're even impressed. Their parents are definitely impressed, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So it makes a well, big difference in her ability to sell those books. And once she got that and she was willing to brag, she normally sells out anytime oh, she goes to a book signing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and it's and so the first question was, do you like dragons? So do I. Do you know I have 30 dragons at my house? And these little kids' eyes are bugged, you know, whoa, whoa, (laughs) very dragons. And on the table are dragons, besides the dragon book. Um, And she's got three of them now. But but besides the dragon book, there's little dragons. And for every kiddo that buys a dragon, guess what they get? They take a dragon home. So those, you know, gimmicks work. You know, what are your add-on gimmicks? What can you give to um, add as a bonus uh, to it? And every age group will be something different. You have to remember, it's not going to be where kids, you know, the the, the dragons um, that they take home and they have something to fondle and play with and walk around as they're walking around the bookstore with mom or dad. Um, but what else? And the same thing goes if it's, if it's a dad that comes in with them, you know, what do you like to read? Well, I like thrillers, <gasps> you know, how would you like? And we, we have someone, we walk them over and introduce some, and then it's up to the author to make the connection and they do it. But somehow, you know, they're still sitting, <laughs> but that's okay. We well, the they do. And I, and I think our group, because of the work that Judith has done, and um, I myself and a lot of other people have supported has really helped authors learn how to brag. And I have to say that I would say our authors, the group, part of the group with author, you have really learned how to brag and it's not easy, but it sure can be a lot of fun when you get out there and you start sharing. It's really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm going to add this on because we are talking about book signings. It's, I think it's a good idea to have a buddy and not necessarily yeah. go solo because it, you can support each other. Cause you know, sometimes you can get tired at these things and they, that you do cross promoting. We have done those where there's been three at a table by the time they're done, they're so cross promoting everybody. Everyone just says, I'll take one of everything and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but just start thinking what can, what's your pitch? What are those words? How can you start that engagement process? Is there a reveal about yourself that will not only enhance your expertise, but is of real interest um, that will 
you know, like like the dragon. I've got 30 dragons. And I don't know anyone else who's got 30 dragons in her house. So, <laughs> so. Well, and I think the other key factor that she shares is that from throughout the world, I don't know if anyone has anything close to it. Again, mm-hmm. it's, it's something that's a brag, but it really subtly engages people in such a way that they want to learn more. And to mm-hmm. be honest, folks, I mean, nobody buy. rarely do people just pick up a book and buy it, though they could. Uh, that's where the, mm-hmm. you know, great, well done covers come in. But really at a book signing, when you're a speaker, you've got to give them a little bit more than that. You've got to inspire them. they got to want to say, I want that, or I want to be entertained, or just want to relax. And mm-hmm. you want to, you need to be able to adjust your brags to fit to where they're at in the moment. Perfect. All right, Jeanette, we have one minute. Any last minute tip you want to share? Well, I just want to reemphasize the thing that I hear people do way too often when they're bragging is that they talk too much. Mm-hmm. Learn to shorten it up. If you re- remember nothing else from this uh, podcast, Keep it short, keep it on point, and remember to brag by using your numbers. It'll mm-hmm. take care of itself if you're doing that. Mm-hmm. And, and my ad for all of you is if you've won book awards, don't forget, that's part of your brag. Um, your yeah. brag also is part of your bio that's in your book. Um, yes. So make sure that you have those elements all together um, in that place. All righty. So another episode of author you, your guide to book publishing. And, you know, we want to thank you both Jeanette and I, and thank you, Jeanette, for being with us this hour. Um, you're welcome. uh, Thank you. Thank you, um, for spending our hour and your authoring and published success. Remember, this is always up to you, always up to you. And remember that your words do matter. So it's time to get them out get them supported, understand that the power of the pitch and the power of your brag could be the difference between you selling one or two books. The typical book signing is four books, four to six books, to selling 20 books, to selling out wherever you are. That's the success with it. I'm Judith Bryles. I'm your book shepherd, book publishing, book marketing expert. And I am proud to say I've sold a million copies and grossed over $5 million with my words and mouth. We'll be back with you next week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryle.